Master, sir, I heard Yoda talking about tenacity. I've been wondering, what is tenacity? Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. We're going to talk about tenacity, guys. What characters want it? It's a pretty pretty interesting topic in my opinion because it's it's uh, one of those stats that a lot of people overlook because and a lot of people don't understand it. So, we're going to we're going to rush through it, guys. Try to make this video fast. So, po tenacity versus potency. So, tenacity helps you resist debuffs. It interacts with potency to determine if you resist a debuff or not. No matter what happens, you, there's always a chance, 15% chance, to, re, to resist a debuff unless it's unresistable. Now, this is co this is completely outside of tenacity versus potency. Like, the, you can resist this, or if your tenacity is better, then, then what, what it would give you, like a 15% chance, if your tenacity would give you normally like a 20% chance, your, your character would use that. So, unless it's completely unresistible, then there is always the chance that a debuff won't hit your character. But, that's not always the case. It, it, I mean, sometimes it's going to be unresistible, and sometimes you have a better chance than 15% chance. But, you always have that baseline of 15% chance that... Uh, you know, they could have a million potency, and you have zero tenacity, and you still have a 15% chance to resist it. Tenacity versus potency. Here's the here's the formula, guys. And this is I calculated it cal calculated it as a, a result of resisting it as opposed to applying the debuff because we're talking about tenacity here. But I mean, you can always just reverse it. So 16 60% chance to resist something is going to also be a 40% chance to apply that debuff. So that's how that's how the, the two different stats interact though. So your tenacity minus potency equals the chance to resist. So here's here's an example here folks. So Nest ha if, if Nest has 100% or 160% tenacity, how much potency do you need to debuff her? And the answer is you have you start having a chance to apply debuffs to Nest at 61% chance or 61%. So you have her tenacity at 160, you have the potency at 61%, then it gives her 99% chance to resist, almost always, but you you need a full hundred more tenacity versus potency to, in order to guarantee that you resist against some someone. Which of course leads to the question, what's the point that like it's tenacity is hugely disadvantaged versus potency, and uh, because because potency you don't need that much of it to apply a, a debuff, as opposed to uh, with with tenacity you need a ton of it even to resist even even just mediocre attempts, and the the idea here is some characters need to resist these things, and there's a lot of different characters that have mechanics that help the boost their chances anyways, so just 160% on tenac tenacity on Nest might not be that impressive until you realize that the people that Nest is facing are going to probably have really low potency or you're going to be able to add more tenacity to her in through other mechanics. So uh, what kind of characters want tenacity? Uh, I mean, a, a few, not, not too many. I have a list of 10 that I'm going to show you guys in a minute, but characters that want to gain a lot of bonus turn meter, characters that counter or assist a lot, characters that can't afford to be stunned or dazed. I mean, those are the great enemies of the characters who want who want to have a lot of tenacity are you don't want them to be stunned. You don't you especially don't want them to be dazed or, you know, shocked, all kinds of different debuffs, but it, you have you have to avoid those if possible. And so, so, you know, you put high tenacity up and hope that no one can actually affect you. Now, one other thing that should be mentioned in terms of trying to get some of these debuffs to go off, sometimes you need to actually proc the ability is what it's called. And what that means is there's, a, there's an additional part of the kit or the, the mechanics that require you to take another check to see if it even happens. So... 
Uh, what happens is, you, if you can read this ability here, this is Darth Vader's basic, and it just applies ability block. It's an 80% chance to inflict ability block. Now, this doesn't mean that you automatically get it. Some people who read this assume like, okay, so once you pass the 80% chance, then you automatically get it. But what happened, what, what it really is, is the game says, okay, 80% of the time, you're gonna even take a potency versus tenacity check. 80% of the time, so 20% of the time, it just fails, period, no matter what. No, they don't get the chance to, to dispel it, or, or not to dispel it, but to resist it. They just, it just doesn't happen. So, you know, it's a non-starter. So, and then the other 80% of the time, then you'll take your potency check versus tenacity check, and it actually happens. Now, there's another factor here. Tenacity up and tenacity down, folks. So, tenacity up, obviously, it's a buff, so it automatically happens, assuming you can actually have a buff. You don't have, like, buff immunity or shock or whatever. Tenacity down automatically applies. I should have put that down here, but it, it's it's unresistible if you can actually proc it. If it says 80% of the time, you still take that 80% check, but then otherwise, they don't take a tenacity check against it. You just get tenacity down. Now, potency up versus tenacity up. The, the two are so different. Tenacity, th this is literally the case though. So you put tenacity up and your tenacity goes all the way up to this huge number. That, that still doesn't mean that you can resist against unresistible debuffs. If someone, if, if, if you can't resist it, like Kylo Ren Unmasked, for instance, will do his two-turn stun. Unless you're completely immune to a stun, then he's still, it doesn't matter that you have a million, basically a million tenacity. You, you're still gonna stun you. Uh, uh, similarly, if uh, I mean, yeah. So your tenacity up, uh, tenacity down. It doesn't. It doesn't matter, guys. If if you have a, a million tenacity, well, if if you had a million, then it would matter. But that's the old, that's about the only time that it would matter at all. So tenacity down. It decreases your tenacity to the point that it doesn't exist, and therefore the only chance you have to resist any of those debuffs is that 15% chance that we talked about. That still applies. Uh, you still have a 15% baseline chance to not have it proc at all, uh, or to have it not work. You have a 15% chance to resist it. As opposed to potency up, you, you get this really lame 50% potency or minus 50% potency. Like, it's, it's not even close to as effective as, po as tenacity up and down. All right, so a couple epic myths, guys. So tenacity, 100% tenacity is enough. People are like, oh, this means that I can resist 100% of the time. And I, I hear people say that, and I'm like, so do you just, like, put 100%? Like, it'd be worth it, probably, to put 100% tenacity on everyone, if that was the case. But it's always, it's a check between the two. So, tenacity versus potency. Not, not... 100% tenacity doesn't mean anything. It's just, it's comparative to potency. Like, like we showed you before on that, on that formula. Uh, another myth. There's always a 15% chance to apply a debuff. Now, I understand why you would think that, because there's that 15% chance to always resist, but that's not the case. If you don't have enough potency, then it just won't apply ever. You can have, you can try a million times. If you have if you have 10 potency and you're trying to hit someone with 300% tenacity, it will never, ever happen unless someone gives you to, or gives them potency or tenacity down or gives I mean even if you have potency up it doesn't, doesn't work so uh, there's that and then finally another, the final myth guys is that Zareth is not benevolent that that is uh, probably the most the biggest falsehood of them all so let's go over some of these characters who want tenacity really quickly and I'll let you guys go shall we let's do this guys let's have have at you Whoa, whoa, we're in the game? <laughs> I have a face? Madness. This is crazy. Okay, first, Nest. If you guys have seen any of my alt streams, you know that Nest has a lot of potency, or a lot of tenacity on her. Now, recently I've been putting more health on her, but the fact is, she likes to have a lot of tenacity, especially because she's able, she doesn't want to get, she wants to counter, so that's one of her big things. And she, when she counters, she also does a lot of health stealing, so she really wants that interaction. Now, the thing about it is, on my alts, you can, you can solo a lot of different teams, especially like Padme teams. If Padme teams are on defense, then it happens like this. So, uh, I mean, she, they don't have a huge amount of 
t of potency. If they do have a lot of potency, then you can take Farm Boy Luke as the lead, and the Farm Boy gives... Uh, he has... he has... everyone gives 45% tenacity. So, uh, I know that I just showed you kind of a, a lower tenacity nest. Normally you want about 160% on her, so it gets her up to about 200 now, another way you can kind of emulate, or you can kind of get tenacity in a way, is with Watt Tambor, and that's that's just applying this shield generator. So she, so when if she does get debuffed, then it, it dispels your own debuffs. So it's not exactly tenacity, but it kind of acts as that a little bit. So you can put that on her, and then Watt will die. But that'll happen. Another one is Hermit Yoda with his master's training. She, she's not a Jedi, but she still gets 25% tenacity. So you can do all of those things, actually. I've done all three of them. It does it does work if you want to do it that way. So something to be thinking about, folks. Other characters who want a lot of tenacity. And this isn't a definitive list, though I think I've listed the majority of characters. You guys can let me know in the comments what you think. But one of them is Mon Mothma. And here's the thing. She does want some speed. And she could have maybe more tenacity, but 178 is great. And then the other piece of it, though, is as the leader... So if you put the entire squad, if you put a decent amount of tenacity on all of them, like if, for instance, you were to put a tenacity square or cross on all of them, I mean, then they, you would add all of that tenacity up and then everyone would get eight percent of their combined tenacity which you know that can, that can add up to what like 40 50 60 percent tenacity something like that i did the math at one point but she's she wants a lot of tenacity because she doesn't want to be dazed or stunned or anything if she can help it but uh, otherwise okay so b2 is an, is another one because let's face it like he's slow anyway some people put speed on him and it, there's almost no point but Here's the thing, you don't want him to be debuffed because he gets so many, so much uh, bonus turn meter. So he's got 182% tenacity, and then uh, on top of that, B1 gives him another 50%. You guys can read the B1 the B1 stats if you want, uh, or, or the kit, but here's the thing. So, uh, it, let's see, oh, this isn't it, uh, this is, yeah, so whenever, whenever another ally is evaded, or damaged, he gets a 40% chance to gain 100% turn meter. Now, 100% turn meter is different than gaining one than gaining a bonus turn. Bonus turns don't worry about turn meter, but turn meter means that you need to not be dazed or shocked. If you're dazed or shocked, that means you can't gain bonus turn meter. And when that happens, then he turns into a pumpkin. He can't actually do anything. And so he's it, that means he needs to have a lot of tenacity, as needs to have a, a lot of chance to not get dazed or shocked. Otherwise, his value tanks and he doesn't do as much. But, however, if he stays undebuffed, then that's pretty good. Same with Magna Guard, guys. On that same team, uh, and remember, he's getting another 50% from B1, at least initially. And you can't get him to as much tenacity because. Frankly, I mean, I think it's still have a tenacity cross on him, but otherwise, I mean, he, he's just a tougher guy. And I don't have tenacity secondaries as much on him either, uh, but he does, I think he gives himself a little bit of tenacity as well. If I remember, yeah, with Grievous, Magna Guard gained 20% tenacity for each target locked enemy. So once you start getting a lot of target locks, then it starts going up quite a bit. Uh, General Hux is another one who wants a lot of tenacity, guys. He has a, lot, has a high natural tenacity, so that, that makes it easier. But you, the thing about him is if he's facing, he's usually on a Supreme Leader Kylo team. If he's with Kylo, then that means that he wants to take bonus turns. At, at, like he wants, Or not bonus turns, but he wants to take his turns based off of all of the different, you know, he's getting 20% turn meter uh, from from his various specials and stuff. And so, so Hux needs to be able to keep going. Going, and he wants uh, the thing is a lot of teams like for instance Jedi Master Luke is going they're going to try to do you know the like an ability block or whatever he wants to do something other than his basic and that means that he's able uh, that he wants a lot of tenacity this is going to this is going to force their hand that it's going to force him to do something different like a different kind of mind trick or whatever 200% tenacity means that he's going to for the most part shrug off efflux and everything and that means he's going to if everyone else has ability block, he can still hand a turn to Kylo, and Kylo can still do his specials because it dispels 
after that. So those are the first three. The next, the next five here, folks. Uh, so the first three are going to be rebels. So Chewie does his assist every time the person he's guarding does something, and so that's nice. He actually on his on his assist, his basic, he inflicts tenacity down. So here's the thing: you you want him to be hitting all the time. He does a lot of damage if he is assisting and he's applying tenacity down. He's he's really cool. He's got all this protect or er, tenacity on him so that when you're countering like general skywalker he doesn't get dazed and uh, i mean if you can get him up to 150 range i feel like it was higher than that at some point for me but uh, lots of lots of tenacity wow yeah there's a, there's a little bit of room for growth here at least guys so i think 160 percent is probably better i wonder what happened to him but you want that because he's protecting the whole team. Well, I guess the big thing though is so Commander Luke, he wants tenacity as well. Like I you put a you put an offense set with a tenacity cross, and I know that you want to do damage with him, but here's the thing, guys. So he has 103% tenacity. Uh, on top of that, he has this learn control thing, and so when he doesn't have his when he hasn't swapped his uh, stances, he gets 100% tenacity. On top of all of that, Chupio on the team he wants some tenacity but the biggest thing about him is he's gonna grab that tenacity from Luke and redistribute it to everyone so 40% of the leaders health protection offense blah 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 but tenacity uh, so he takes 40% of that he keeps it for if he keeps 40% for himself he gets 20% of it out to the rest of the rebels and so what, what happens is if Luke has 100% tenacity that means that Chupio gets 40% tenacity, so that's nice, he's at 150%, and then on top of that, Luke gets another 20%, and Chewie gets another 20%, so Chewie gets up to 173, and it starts, it turns it into a very difficult thing for General Skywalker to get days on him, or for someone else to get days, or shock, or whatever, and having that high base tenacity is going to be nice, Commander Luke's going to be at 220% tenacity when he's in his stance, it's pretty nice. So, uh, you know, and Chupio's going to be assisting all the time, every single time a rebel goes. And so he's he's also just proccing, or he's also just shooting all the time. And if he gets stunned or dazed or whatever, he's not going to be doing that, which you want to stop that from happening. Now, another one that's really obvious, kind of, is Wampa. Maybe it's non-obvious, though. Here's the thing, guys. He starts with a bunch of tenacity. He's got the cool Omicron and everything. He's got, so Wampa gains 100% tenacity right out the gate and that seems like that should be enough so you know he starts he starts his baseline is like 50 i believe and so and so he's uh it doesn't seem like that he starts with 150 percent and then on top of all of that folks he's also uh whenever he's hit he gains another 30 percent tenacity uh and so every single time he's hit he gets 30 percent tenacity stacking and so it, it pretty quickly gets out of control. Now, if you do if you do tenacity down, that's not going to matter for him it, even a little bit. Poor guy. He needs he needs a little bit. Uh, I mean, he doesn't have a he won't ever get to a million tenacity to overrule it, but uh, so you need to be careful about it. The thing is, if if a character or team have a way to overcome his starting tenacity, guys, then it's it's a pretty big deal because if they can stun him, then he can't counter, he can't do anything. In if you can get a couple full turns of attacks, like Iden Versio was one of them, if you max out her potency and you get the stun on Wampa, then you get two full turns to cycle through and kill him. And he won't survive, especially in the opening, because of this icebreaker. So if you get the initial stun on Wampa, then... then uh, bad things happen for Wampa. So you want that tenacity. So he's 170% with that extra Omicron tenacity goes up to 270%, which means that someone's going to need 171% or more to be able to inflict that initial stun. So uh, Wampa really wants it. Now Jolie, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this guy. So here's the thing. He wants, he wants crit avoidance. And I know that's not the same stat as tenacity, but here's the thing about Jolie, guys. He has 100% tenacity of base, and, and he's immune to turn meter reduction effects, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so at the big start of the battle, he gains bonus critical avoidance equal to half of his tenacity. This is something that's overlooked quite a bit. 100% tenacity, and, and, then all, and then on top of that, whatever his tenacity is, he gains half of that as critical 
avoidance. So here's the thing, guys. You put you want you want health and stuff. He's like he, the most obvious stat for him is health. Uh, you know that's 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 the most apparent. But if you can give him a lot of tenacity, guys. So I've, I'm only I'm only putting some tenacity on him because at this point I, I have enough crit avoid on him because I have relic five. But he's at 94% tenacity, and then he's got another 100% from his kit. So he's at 194. Half of that is going to be what uh, you know. 90 something 96 i guess 97 seven maybe um so he gets all that crit avoid on top of this so he's got 42 percent from his from his uh, arrow is what i've given him and then from from his from his actual uh relic level i think he's gaining some crit avoid as well if i'm correct yeah he's only gaining 77.5 if you get him get him a couple more he's gonna he's gonna be even more uh, crit avoid but here's the thing guys so right now he's gaining like 90 something percent uh, tenacity is uh, which is pretty nice or he's getting 90 something percent crit avoid and that that's super nice add, add it to this and he's like right at 150 percent the thing is general grievous if you're countering general grievous which used to be a bigger thing than it currently is but regardless if they have something that negates your crit avoidance or if you have if they have a high enough crit chance then it can kind of kind of bypass your total crit avoid so you need more it's a it's very similar to tenacity actually you need more crit avoid than just 100 percent because some people have a ton of crit chance and they're going to just and negate your crit avoid so with jolie you can get a huge amount of crit avoid and make him the tank you never knew you needed so i think that that is just about it folks uh, i <laughs> i wish that this video was shorter but man i think i think this should give a pretty good rundown of how tenacity works and everything let me know who did i miss who should be on this list folks there's there's probably a few that i missed I, i'm not sure remember that tenacity down and tenacity up is a huge huge factor for all of this i explained that a little bit before but that's that's really what the biggest considerations when you're going into one of these fights is like well nest can't actually get into that because she'll get tenacity down or and die similarly wampa if you're facing some one, if you're facing an Iden Versio team with TIE Fighter Pilot, TIE Fighter Pilot has tenacity down on basic and therefore is going to stop your Wampa from being able to operate and function the way you want him to. So guys, let me know what your thoughts are. I appreciate all of you. Help me mount the algorithm, please comment and like all that stuff. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails.